everyone. So good afternoon, uh, Noha and Oktai and Kirsten. We're happy to have you here to discuss our soft skills course um, that we've uh, uh, been able to help facilitate uh, via uh, Noha's uh, Mawada project. And I apologize if I'm mispronouncing that, Noha. I think I got it. Sounds good. One. Yes, and, you got it. Uh, um, this all started um, last fall when Octai, uh, one of our STEM alumni, uh, reached out to us via a top mini grant proposal uh, with the idea of, of uh, helping his uh, kids with a, a, a students in Columbus, Ohio with a soft skills course. And uh, we didn't really know where to turn. So we, we turned to the uh, Bosch Alumni Network, and that's where we were. Uh, uh, united with Noha from, from Dubai. And uh, she uh, and Octai developed a, a course together, which took place uh, last fall, primarily in the months of uh, uh, October, November, if I recall. Um, so um, uh, we were great uh, to see that. It was great for us to see that collaboration. We, we really liked the outcomes we saw from the report you all submitted. And uh, we, we're really uh, great to see how many students in the Columbus, Ohio area we were able to, to impact positively with that, with that, uh, with that course. And uh, we really do believe that soft skills are something that are very important for students to get to know um, as they look at their careers, as they try to find themselves in their careers, as they try to prepare um, themselves for, for working with diverse communities and colleagues and, and uh, coworkers. Uh, that they'll be involved with in the future. And uh, we really feel like uh, this soft skills course that you all helped put together really uh, helped achieve some of those objectives. And so uh, we're here to discuss that course and uh, um, talk about where it's, where it's gone and, and with Octai's experiences and, and also talk about uh, what might, the future might look like for this course and, uh, and how we'd like to be able to roll it out to, to more top alumni. So um, thank you, Octai. Thank you, Noha. Thank you, Kirsten, for being here. And uh, we're looking forward to this conversation. So thank you very much. And I'll, I'll turn it over to Noha. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Wade. Great to be here. Um, yeah, hello, everyone. <laughs> um, so as Wood said, you know, it was a, it was a really sort of serendipitous, uh, you know, way for us to all come together. But it was really great to be able to pilot this program uh, last year so 2020 um what i was hoping to do is just kind of walk us through a little bit what we did and what the program looked like and just just you know very high level overview of what we did and then um the idea was to then discuss and explore you know what we could do uh moving forward does that sound good okay i do have some slides thank you so let me just uh, share my screen and okay can you see that? Yep. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> so right. So it was a collaboration. It was a collaboration, as Wood just mentioned, between the Transatlantic Outreach Program, the Moada Project, which is um, my organization here at UAE, and the Horizon Science Academy, uh, the Columbus High School, where Octai is based. Um, and I can't. Okay, skipped a few slides. Right, so this is what we're going to do today is just kind of walk through the experience um, and just discuss the needs and next steps. So, um, Octai had reached out saying that he was looking for ways to help build soft skills as part of the course that he was teaching. And Octai, perhaps you can walk us through that in a minute. Um, and so, what we ended up creating together was just an online program across, it was, we ran it, it was November, December, it was four, designed for four weeks, it spanned across six weeks because we took a few breaks in between. Um, and the idea was to really just focus on a few critical skills that we thought, you know, we could start with and, and that we thought were really important. And the, and the idea was to create a space for reflection and inspiration and engaging with this topic and just kind of really creating the space for them to just be more aware of what the skill might look like or what it might, you know, how they might be able to start uh, incorporating that skill into their life, trying to practice and develop the skill, um, looking at examples, being inspired by speakers from around the world um, through panels and, and case studies and 
um, and other conversations. So the pilot was with 21 high school students and Oksai will, will tell us a little bit more about them specifically. Um, so actually maybe Oksai, maybe you can just tell us about the students right now. Yeah, so, well, let me correct one thing. Even though there were 21 students actively participating, I used that for my other students, which was about 80 plus. So um, the whole program impacted over 100 students. Right, <laughs> thanks for clarifying, Akta. And I, I believe actually, Akta, you had shared that um, the, the tools and the resources were used even more broadly than that across the school yep. district. So something like 450 uh, right, students. Right, yes. the, right. So can you tell us a little bit more about the students that we worked with last, uh, last um, uh, in the winter? Because uh, yeah. you know them better than I do. <laughs> so yeah, so you, you, we were online virtual. So this program designed to be the virtual as well. So uh, when I said 21 students right there, they were actively uh, participating and some dedicated time, but I use those resources to for my other classes too um, every day when we meet with NOHA. And, um, and then we collected all these resources for within the district too. So they use those too. Um, and then we all, all whole, I would say all the districts use all the materials that we uh, adopted from NOHA. So uh, my students, um, if we say from the beginning, they were uh, all the CT um, courses and they are taking um, a career technical uh, courses in a sense, but there was a need for soft skills. So I just reached out to them and to make sure that uh, we really um, teach those kids with the soft skills they need. But the, the fascinating was, um, to get uh, a lot of experts from all over the places because one of the um, key elements of the soft skills to make sure that they are um, really good at working in the diverse uh, communities and you know, diverse environments, but that was the hit for, um, for the program where NOVA provided us lots of guest speakers from all over the places. So um, I mean, say I, I mean all over the place from all over the world. <laughs> I will, I will get to that in a second. That Thank you all. all of those. So anyway, <laughs> that was the overall. Thanks, Octai. Um, uh, and hopefully we'll we'll hear a little bit more too about the experience from you. Um, so. Right, as Octai was saying, uh, there were 21 high school students that were participating with the program directly. And these were students uh, who are mostly from immigrant families, low-income uh, immigrant families. And so uh, that was also just a consideration in, in terms of the program design. Um, ooh, there's tech, okay. Um, and so the topics that we ended up covering for this pilot program were these four topics specifically. Um, we did look at a broader list of skills that might be relevant based on, you know, uh, what Octai was already working on and what we felt the needs were. So these were four that we thought we could explore that were, you know, that were broad enough and there was a little bit of a link, you know, like they tie into each other nicely. Um, but there was like a longer list of, I think about 30 different skills that we considered. So diversity and inclusion, just knowing how big and important a topic that is today, uh, you know, in the United States and around the world. So we, um, we started with that actually. Um, and then identity and values. So from that, like, who am I, what's important to me? What are my values? You know, how, like, how does that, what are, how do my values play out in the workplace, in my professional life? You know, what does that look like? Um, and then language and communication, really, really broad. <laughs> um, and I think it would be helpful perhaps to narrow this one down uh, in future iterations, but just, just really the point here was actually to highlight the, the power of language and communication to just actually bring awareness to how important it was to be able to communicate well, and effectively and to you know give and receive information um, and to just sit with kind of the importance of good communication. Um, and then goals and career planning. So the idea was just, you know, now that we've 
kind of talked about some of these just really basic things and skills, um, looking a little bit more broadly at, at the students' goals, like goal setting, setting goals and using that skill to plan for their careers. Um, yeah, this is, this, these are some of the other buckets, but also specific skills that we considered. Um, and we chose, you know, the ones that we just talked about uh, for, you know, for various reasons. But obviously, there's a lot of soft skills that, that can be included uh, in a program like this. So um, one of the, again, for simplicity and also, you know, to, the, to be able to kind of do this uh, at scale in the future, hopefully, and, and with each of these skills, we created just a really simple model where each week we would cover a topic. And during that week, we would have three sessions, 45 minutes each, which I felt was a little bit tight. Um, but, um, and we were constrained a little bit by the students class at like, you know, just the, the time that they had, right? Octide, they actually had 30 minute classes and we expanded them to 45, but the general structure was inspire, engage, reflect. So the inspiration came through panel discussions and uh, guest speakers, fashion, working professionals from all around the world um, who were there to be able to share stories and talk about that specific skill in the context of a professional life. Um, and then engage, this is where we would really dig into the topic and have conversations and discussions and look at case studies and maybe play games or role plays or different activities and exercises to help really, you know, understand what the skill looks like and what it's about. Um, obviously within, you know, a limited time frame, and then reflect. So kind of really taking what, they, taking what they've learned from the guest speakers, from the Inspire session, from the Engage session, and trying to synthesize it just a little bit and think about how that relates to their personal context and what they can act on based on what they've learned. Um, so I have included details here, but this, this is, uh, these are some of our, um, panel guest speakers and they really actually are from all around the world. So um, we had Paul from South Africa, Marta from Spain. Uh, I mean, and I can go into the question. Paul is an oncologist. Marta is a, um, an interpreter for sign language in, in Spain, uh, Catalan sign language. Um, and then Tesfai, who is Ethiopian based in the US. Esther, uh, who's based in the UK. Who runs a an NGO? Who works at an NGO and runs a social enterprise? Uh, Tonya, who is um, of South Asian descent, based in the UAE. Torek, uh, who also runs his own business and works with um, environmental sustainability. And um, Mbali from South Africa. Uh, yeah, it's, <laughs> and. Um, and we have, um, oh man, uh, sorry, <laughs> the name is escaping me. He's in but, Bahrain, if I remember correctly. Tarek was in Bahrain, yeah. Yes. Um, right, and so, uh, and then we had, uh, forgive me, uh, what do you remember our... His, uh, um, his, name, his name is escaping me as well at the moment, but he's the, okay. he's the uh, director of apprenticeship training at Festo North America, so. Right. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we, yeah. we, we definitely had the, uh, the, the German company uh, apprenticeship representation. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it was really interesting because initially this was intended as just, uh, you know, inspiration for sure. But it was actually really great to see how much the students engaged with the speaker, like with the panel discussions and asked a lot of great questions. And they really, in the feedback, it came up that this was the part that they actually really enjoyed a lot. Um, so it was it was nice to be able to incorporate that into the program and definitely something we'd like to build on just given how much uh, of an impact it had on the students just being able to see and hear from speakers uh, and professionals from all around the world relating to the different skills that we were talking about. Um, these are just this is just again just a quick overview of some of the points of feedback uh, or sort of outcomes that we had so um 79 percent of the students enjoyed the program and found it beneficial which is really great feedback and then 80 percent um you know rated the guest speakers as good or excellent um and 50 percent of, of students actually called referred to the panel as their highlights so that was also great um and then 84 percent of students said they'd recommend the program to other teens which is also a really great um you know data point for us 
and 450 students in the school district benefited from the resources that and the recordings and the you know and the material that we shared uh, through Octai obviously and through his school network. Um, I think that's actually just kind of really really high level overview on my end. Um, Octai, it would be great if you wanted to add anything about just what the experience was like um, for you as a teacher and perhaps for your students, you know, from what you uh, heard from them during and afterwards. Yeah, well, thank you. Um, so, as I said before, the idea came from the teaching them the soft skills in the inner city settings in Columbus. Um, it was a great opportunity for them to see a variety of speakers and uh, they, when they share their experiences with them. And they were really excited to see someone who look, just looked like them as well. And I think uh, Noah did a good job selecting those speakers as well. So they were confident to engage with those speakers as well. Um, it was overall, they, um, I would say the great level was usually freshmen and sophomore. And they were at the point where they still trying to understand how to um, be in the career in the future and how to build those skills so that when they graduate uh, from the high school, they will be ready or at least be qualified uh, for the workforce. Um, but at the end, they were so happy. They were more confident. I would, I would say uh, they were also um, really excited to um, build upon whatever they learned. Um, that was the one of the things that I really liked them to do initially, and they're ready. And they were like, I, we, can, um, uh, we can do this, and we can at least apply for the job, because this is one of the problems I had where I was having a hard time um, getting students to apply a job even though they were graduating from the CTU courses or uh, program, but now they were confident uh, even for applying for the job as well. So that was the overall experience. Um, you know, I, I was really fortunate that we built and uh, created this uh, program together. Um, again, I think uh, the things that we saw in um, Noah's presentation were is not fixed. I think every, based on the needs of the teachers, it can be changeable. You know, the topics we selected together were the ones that we need. I think uh, Noah can change it um, based on the teacher's need as well. Right, Noah? <laughs> um, so these are the things that we needed, particularly in our district. So that was my experience, I would say. Let me know if you have any other questions. <laughs> Awesome, thank you, Oktai. Um, yeah, I appreciate it. And yes, I mean, I think the idea, we were piloting this and we worked cl you know, closely with Oktai to figure out what the needs were and what the specific skills uh, you know, that were relevant were, but definitely for future iterations, we'd be happy to expand that. Now that we've had that, you know, that experience and that experiment, um, you know, we can, we've learned a lot, so it would be easier to, to go, you know, to, to build on that. And, uh, and do more. So I'll stop here um, and actually just, you know, if anybody has any questions, because then after this, I would love to ask you some questions, maybe Chris, Kirsten, um, but uh, do you have any questions for us about the program that we run? Yes, go for it, Wood. I just wanna say thank you for, for leading us into that. Uh, I would like to welcome uh, Bill McGowan, who I'm, who I'm sure he's, He's listening. I, I, um, uh, I know he's definitely popped on, um, but uh, uh, at some point, uh, definitely invite him to, to turn on his camera if he likes. Um, but uh, I guess you know, going back to I think I think Octai summarizes quite quite well. I remember his initial email to me. I think last fall, it's like I've got it's like I've got some smart kids. They don't know how to do the next part. They don't know how to. Get to the job part. They don't know, you know, about the work setting, all this kind of stuff, and and that's what soft skills are all about. It's all about even that small detail of how you walk into an office and extend your arm and have a firm handshake. I mean, that is a soft skill <laughs> at its most basic level. Um, but you know, if, if no one is teaching you how to do that, and you you've got a background where that you know maybe your parents were never taught, um, which applies 
to a whole lot of people in this country, um, uh, then then I, you know soft skills are are, are incredibly valuable, and uh, they're not easy to teach. Um, they're not easy to come by in terms of someone who can really, you know, uh, approach with and work with teachers and students uh, on, on some very very important skills. And uh, I think we just it was just as luck would have it, um, we found Noah and and uh, and her, her incredible skills and her incredible network of people that she made available to Octai and her students. So. Um, uh, I just want to again thank you for for being here and um, yeah I would I would definitely uh, echo your sentiments and, and open the floor to to uh, to Bill and Kirsten specifically and also the rest of the top team um, and of course Noah you should feel free like you can uh, ask away uh, as well so sure thank you I think Bill has his hand raised so um, Bill if you have a question go for it okay can you hear me yeah yes. Okay, I cannot turn on my camera because my broadband is not strong enough to accommodate no both, both my voice and my lovely face right now. So <laughs> I don't, I don't want to drop you guys. Um, but thank That's you very much. Lot. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. Wood, Wood could tell you later. Um, but I'll tell you though, um, I've seen such a need for this type of course. Um, where I am, um, I teach in Southern Maryland and in a fairly rural area, you know, quasi suburban, but um, still a, a fairly traditional area, but um, maybe uh, intermingled with uh, some, some military families as well. And um, the rural slash suburban mix down here, um, it, it leads to, I think people um, forgetting that some of these kids um, they're not going to stay rural, suburban. They, they want to explore their world outside uh, of this area. And I've especially found that to be true with how these military kids from all over the world influence some of our rural kids to want to explore um, further, which is really cool. But um, they, they're, they're woefully unprepared by the time they're applying, uh, you know, for colleges and for internships in their junior and senior years of high school. Um, and, and, and they don't know that they're unprepared. Um, and the school districts here, uh, definitely, you know, extremely content oriented in terms of, well, let's make sure that they do well on their STEM tests and let's make sure that they pass the Maryland requirements for English and government. But this always seems to take a back seat. So um, one thing a colleague and I um, are, attempting to participate in is building something like this. So we're fascinated by this. Um, and I, I know that we would be interested in, in pursuing something like it further and, and, and getting more information from you all. The one quick question I have after all that obnoxious intro is um, I was wondering what that list of 30 things, so to speak, you all said you started with look like. Like I know you you boiled it down to four four themes or so, but I think there was a list of, of 30 that you referenced early on. Like, I, I'm very curious to see what was on that list because that's kind of the list that we have going. It's a, it's a, it seems like a monster uh, to try to teach them all these things. So can you speak to that a little bit? Sure, um, thanks Bill. Thanks for the intro too uh, and the context. I think, I think you're right, I mean, I, also from conversations with um, just different contacts that I have, like it just, it just seems like this, the need for obviously, and I think, you know, we all know this, um, but we know it in different ways and at different levels, but like the need for soft skills training is, is just, it's so important. And depending on which kids where, you know, the gap and the need obviously varies. Um, so I'm sharing it on the screen. I don't know if you can see, I mean, this is just the list that we had. And I part of actually where this list came from was also looking at the curriculum that Octai shared with me for their course and what they specifically, like their learning objectives for the semester and what they specifically needed to work on. So this was a combination of sort of just general um, skills that, that come up on these soft skills lists, but also, you know, being specific about what uh, was most relevant to Octai for these students taking this course. Um, I don't know if you can see the screen. I'm I mean, I can read some of this, but also the recording I think will be up so you can take a look afterward. Um. No, I can see it. Thank you very much. Yeah, and I'm very interested in 
even further detail on that curriculum that you were you were talking about as well. So um, anything that anyone is willing or able to share, even in another format, would be wonderful. <laughs> Thanks, Bill. Um, what is that a question or is that? Uh... I guess my question continues with the, the, the rubric we see in front of us. Um, was this already developed by you uh, before you met Octai, or did you all explore these and then break them into the three categories and then narrow down on the five highlighted and bold ones to move forward? Or how did you all start with this and then end up with the five that you ended up picking, which obviously can be tailored for, for example, any if, if you work with any other top alumni, um, you know, this the same for lack of better words, menu can be uh, can be poten potentially presented and then tailored to fit the needs of the of the particular educator you're working with. Right. Um, so no, this was not developed before uh, this whole interaction happened. Um, but but it was you know Octa had shared with us his course outline right with the learning specific learning objectives and learning outcomes and I actually just kind of really combed through that. It was very detailed and I extracted from that you know, all the things that sounded, you know, that, that, that involved soft skills in any way. And then I kind of did the grouping and that, this was just for us to be able to work because it was a lot of skills. And I was like, okay, <laughs> we need some way to, some way to process this a little bit and put it into buckets. Sorry for the noise. Um, and, you know, and, and then, you know, create, create some sort of selection process. I think in terms of the ones we ended up selecting for this pilot, really, I don't think there was too much of a methodology behind it, except, you know, trying to uh, hit some core ones that, that you would have to have before you could talk about some of the higher, like higher level ones. Like, I feel like you can't really, I mean, you could talk about decision making without identity and values but I think I was just kind of thinking like what are some foundational things that, that we can start with um, but also just things that we were a little bit more prepared to talk about and teach um, given the time frame and given that this all came about very quickly so um, Kirsten I know you have a question and I'd love to hear it no that's fine um, I, want, I want to say thank you um, we have I'm just kind of giving you I teach um, clean energy technology um, in Columbia South Carolina so like Octa it's career technical um, and um, college students both going into college and career um, and we have done soft skills programs um, before um, and it are, it, we are actually required to teach soft skills as part of the class. But what I really thought was interesting about this and why I was really interested in what you were doing was that kind of the global component. We, um, we also have a military, we have Fort Jackson here. Our district has like 47 native languages. So we definitely, and then of course we have international companies here in, in South Carolina. So we really wanna focus on not just the soft skills that we're used to in maybe South Carolina, but you know what what you've been doing basically of of really bringing that that holistic um, because it is likely that our students will work with you know even if they just stay in South Carolina with multiple cultures. So I really like that approach. Thank you. Um, yeah, I appreciate it. Um, yeah, and I think again, I actually I think I underestimated um, personally. I underestimated how cool, how much um, that part of it, just bringing in people from all around the world and different cultures, backgrounds, perspectives. I I knew that was important, but I I just didn't realize how much the kids would uh, really kind of respond well to that. So um, yeah, was there anything else, uh, Kirsten, that you were curious about or or that you'd like to know? Yes, and I'm probably the student in the back who was that while I was giving directions. Um, no so did I, I know um, Akte said that you know, there were 21 that did the direct interaction. So was that that you had the one class and then you repeated the recordings for like later in the day? Is that how that works? Um, I can jump in if you want. Um, so what we did was, so we selected, I have seven periods a day and what we selected was depends on the, um, world region, the closest time point was our latest period, which was seven period. It was around 12 a, a p.m. over here. But, um, and then what we did was, let's do in that period interactively. And then we had the recordings as well as the resources in the Google Classroom. So what I did was collect all these and then use those materials for my other uh, classes as well. 
and then this is how we worked out. But you know, obviously, if you have a larger classes or if you can accommodate all these students in one place or one time, that would be more beneficial and more um, interactive way. But you know, in the time strain and as well as the online thing, this is what we did in the best best way, I would say. Yeah, thank you, Octai, for sharing. And I think one one thing that I've been thinking about since we did that because what we did was a live sync you know, session for these 21 kids three times a week. And that was, you know, concentrated to that group of students. And then whatever Octai could kind of take and share uh, was, I guess, what he did. Um, but it would be really interesting to look at how to do this with sort of more of the asynchronous components. So perhaps some pre-recorded videos um, and then maybe a few live sessions that students could choose to opt into or not. I do think the live sessions are, are important for obviously for for like a good chunk of um, the experience, but I think we can incorporate more of the asynchronous material and content so that it could be more easily scalable, I guess, and and, and used by more students. No, thanks. I, that does kind of answer it, although um, I do agree. I think you have to practice any skill. So whether that's technical or soft or whatever you want to call it, somewhere in between. So you know, mm -hmm. I do appreciate the opportunity for that synchronous as well. Yeah. Um, I had a few questions for, for, for the group, I guess, for the teachers in the room, but um, everyone else. But before that, were there any other questions for Octai and myself? Okay, I will take that as a not, not for now um, and keep going. So, I mean, really, actually, I mean, I had a slide with these questions, but I don't need to put it up. Um, I think I was just curious about, you know, thinking about moving next, next um, future versions of this and what we could do with that. I guess I just was curious, you know, what would be ideal for you as teachers with your students? Would it be, I mean, let me just kind of paint a few pictures and scenarios here, and then I'd love to hear your thoughts. But um, I mean, one, we're coming up to the summer. So would it be that we do something over the summer or would it be something that would be integrated into the school year starting in the fall? Um, would it be something that, would you prefer for it to be something that students opt into so they can sign up for and do sort of after school or again, something that you would rather do during with them during school hours? Um, so just kind of thinking, so let's, I'll stop there because then I have other questions, but just, you know, start uh, like when um, and sort of how, would you want all your students to do it at the same time or would you want a few to choose, opt into it or would you want to select your own group of students? So just around those two points. And that's to you, Bill and uh, Kirsten. I was just kind of waiting to see um, to see if anyone else unmuted. Um, so for me, um, what we went from everybody doing it to making it optional, and that kind of diminished its importance. Mm -hmm. And so I would like I don't want to you know I don't want to mandate that you know, but in terms of because it is so essential and because we have to teach it anyway. Um, even if it's, I teach a couple different classes and I don't need to get into all um, next fall, but um, there's one specific that I have to teach so many lessons on soft skills anyway. Um, but I can see it being beneficial for any of the classes. Um, and I guess that would just be availability, you know, logistics and things like, you know, those time periods. Um, you know, I guess that's the, um, the catch of, you know that I think that even sometimes when um, we resist things, I know myself too. You know, like oh, I don't want to do this. You don't necessarily see the benefit until you're through it, uh, through with it. And I think soft skills can definitely be one of those things. So I don't know if that answered. So That's preferably all. all. <laughs> I don't have huge classes, so I mean, yeah. Okay. I, I how how many? If we did all of your students just out of curiosity, how many would that be? Probably thirty or less. So. Okay. I'm spoiled. <laughs> <laughs> Good to know. Thank you. Bill, did you have thoughts just on those two points? Um, yeah, I would I would probably be in a slightly different situation in that I would probably be hand selecting um, students that would participate. Um, 
and it would be um, they they would be you know having to opt in also. It wouldn't be something that um, right. you know, I would be able to mandate on my end now. Though of course mm -hmm. I would love to see it build towards something like that. Right. Um, so I mean the way I kind of have seen some of these types of things work is um, sometimes if there is a like a video component um, to what you have recorded um, that they can watch in almost like a flipped classroom kind of kind of way um, mm -hmm. and then um, have set aside times where uh, there's an expectation uh, that they meet quote unquote um, online or um, even in person, if, if Lord willing, that ends up being an option again at some point, but, um, yeah, I, 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 I see this as something that, um, would probably need to start relatively small where I am. And then, um, that would hopefully flower when people realize its benefits. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. No problem. Um, and then the other question, and this is also, I think key is would the preference be, so what we did last time was, you know, we, the Moada project, so on my end, we kind of put together the content, um, you know, working with Octai a little bit and checking for, for needs and relevance. Um, and then and then we ran the sessions live during Octai's class, you know, times with the students. Um, but we kind of took the lead on that a little bit. Obviously Octai was, was definitely, you know, there and fully, Supporting, um, but my question for future iterations, just thinking about feasibility and logistics a little bit, is: Would you prefer for someone else to lead and run the sessions, or would would, for example, it be more appealing if you were given a structure and and the outline and the you know and the lesson plan and all the materials and then and then a little bit of training on that specific framework, and then you know run it on your own not entirely, but for you to take more of a lead in, in terms of running and facilitating the program. Would the uh, would the statement a little bit of both be okay? Um, sure. I, do, I think there is an attractiveness to having an outside, an outside voice um, right. from time to time, but so that the students sense as much of a buy-in and passion um, from me as I would expect from them. Um, and hope from them. I think it would be necessary almost like a 50-50 type of proposition where I could lead things and then collaborate or allow uh, someone else to take uh, the wheel uh, the other 50% of the time. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no, that's helpful. <laughs> I, I agree 100%. <laughs> Sorry. No, then... <laughs> So did you, I just that that there's benefits um, to both. I wouldn't want to lose that um, external voice, you know, right. in terms of. Um, but I, you know, feasibility-wise, I know that we may have to, you know, pull that some of that weight too. And it, again, the buy-in from the students recognizing we're buying into it too. Right. Right. Okay. Great. Yeah. No. That and that makes sense. And I think that actually could play out really nicely. So then a follow-up question uh, to that, and then I think perhaps this is the last of my questions, um, is how open, depending on, you know, your schools or the, just the systems and structures that you're in, how open would you be to sharing the program experience with across schools or across states or, across, you know, like, you know, Kirsten and Bill, you know, you're, you're, you're both on this call. Like if we were to run this program in such a way that students from both of your, both of your students could attend the same iteration of the program, would that work for you? Or would you prefer for it to be sort of a, like an exclusive experience for your classroom and for, you know, that specific set of students that you would select, for example, Bill, um, or for your school? Or would you be open to sort of a, a broader range of participants? Sure. I mean, we don't, that is, as long as, you know, we don't have that problem in terms of like the privacy side is the one thing that that shouldn't be an issue. Um, we have students, we have students that can opt out, but we could always sit them in different, you know, in terms of um, being visible to others. Mm -hmm. But, um, but yeah, from the, I th you know, I always think the more voices you get, the, the more valuable the experience. Um, you know, I know scheduling might be a little bit of a nightmare trying to get it to work all out. Um, but, um, but yeah, that, I mean, that would be absolutely fine. So 
to the more the merrier. <laughs> cool. Phil? Sorry, I'm, I'm putting you on the spot there, but okay. No, no, that that's okay too. Um, I know um, for me personally, I'm actually really interested in um, broadening uh, perspectives and horizons. So I, I know that I, I try to communicate that to my students as well. Um, and they, they're open to it. Um, sometimes um, their rural parents aren't as open to it as they are. I mean, um, yeah. that doesn't mean though, like it, it just takes some, some fostering. And then um, I, I think that that could be something that could actually even be uh, a cell point. Part of Right. or something yeah. like this um, mm -hmm. is telling the kids you know look you can show your parents um, the value in what it is you're trying to do if you allow us to be exposed to multiple perspectives so I I would welcome the idea of it being open um, to other students not just my own exclusively um, and again though perhaps there's some type of, of mix that could be yeah. achieved where they feel yeah. some personal attention at times and then at other times mm -hmm. they know it's more of a clearinghouse for ideas for people from all right. over. And I think, and what comes to mind for me is it would be one of the two that's private, either the, so for example, and this is something that we didn't actually build out too much in the previous iteration, but um, like the, the off, not offline, because it's all online, but the, um, you know, the asynchronous part of it, where it's like, you know, there's a discussion, like, a, like the Google Classroom, for example, where we can post things and then can continue the conversation. So either that space, I mean, it wouldn't be Google Classroom, it would be something, you know, external. So either that space would be private, where students from a specific school or a specific, you know, uh, district or region would be um, would have their own private space there and then the live sessions would be mixed or vice versa right where I think actually that would be the option that makes more sense um, given that the live component is the more uh, <laughs> is the scarcer resource perhaps so um, so I think perhaps we could we could create a mix where they had some private space to continue the conversation and reflect and and discuss and engage but then the live sessions could be more diverse um in other times i would use the word hybrid but i'm tired of that word <laughs> <laughs> Fair um great well i think that's it on my end um just in terms of just getting a little bit of a sense of what's needed and also sharing what we did um would i don't know if you wanted to talk about any specific next steps on your end for top um, or if anybody else had anything to add or ask or share. Well, before I, I, I say anything like uh, sort of a quasi-conclusion, I, I would open up the floor to Jenny and Lisa if they have any, any comments or questions that they have maybe after uh, having a chance to listen in for the last 50 minutes. All right, sorry, I completely excluded you both <laughs> in that process. No, no, no worries. Hi, and I... Uh, just would like to say thank you, obviously, to Noah and to uh, our alumni who joined us today. Um, it's it's wonderful to see that you all are engaged and wanting to give your students these skills. And I appreciate, you know, um, also the connection um, that Octa and Kirsten have to, um, you know, apprenticeships and the the curriculum that they're teaching their students. And so it was really interesting to hear and glad that you all are engaged and and want to take advantage of this opportunity and look forward to seeing where it goes. Thank you, Jenny. Yeah, thank you so much. I'm sorry, I don't have much to add, but I'm really excited to see you and to meet you and to um, to hear what you all did because it was kind of, you know, we were doing something else. And so this is a really nice recap. Thank you so much for taking the time. Thanks, Lisa, I appreciate it. Yeah, Lisa um, and Jenny had, had heard me refer to you in, in the course, but um, Definitely uh, uh, lacked, uh, you know, the, the visual piece and the and, and the in-depth, you know, insight. So I'm, I'm happy that, uh, uh, as busy as we, the three of us are right now, uh, that uh, we're all to be on this call and to to get to meet you directly. Right. Thank you for making the time. And honestly, it's been a pleasure to be part of this program and to work with, you know, everybody all over. It's been such a unique, uh, rewarding experience. So I'm grateful to be here as well. 
um would I'll, I'll hand it over to you yeah yeah so in closing I, I would just like to reiterate that um you know uh you know in the, in the before times you know we were doing a lot of our study tours to, to germany and and uh you know kristen and, and bill and and uh Uptai have all been been participants of those and um, um remain some of uh you know really great active alumni in our network um I can't speak to their individual study tours specifically, but I, I can tell you that every delegation I've led to a German company and especially um, to any, you know, apprenticeship training facilities uh, of some of the biggest brands and companies you can think of, whether it's a, a Siemens or a, or a, or a BMW or a, or, a, or a Volkswagen or Audi or any of those, those German brands, um, their directors of, of uh, HR and, and, and apprenticeship training have all reiterated the same point. Uh, talking point, and that is that you know, a successful career and a successful successful uh, employee is about twenty five percent hard skills and seventy five percent soft skills. Um, and I, I I I've heard that once. I've heard it a million times. Um, and uh, I think it's it's something that is relegated to um, all too often in this country as as uh, into the background. Um, and I but I see of course three alumni here who realize that. Um, it's very much should be in the foreground um, and needs to be, uh, you know, discussed more. And I can only I can only agree with that. And uh, um, you know, we're proud here at Top to uh, be able to extend this opportunity to to our alumni. Um, and so it's my hope that um, anyone who's watching this right now or who who uh, watches this in the future, because um, it will be uh, you know uploaded to YouTube and then put on our our alumni Facebook group, for instance, um, anyone who's listening should realize that if they are interested in this topic um, and they have an idea already in their mind of, um, uh, you know, a time frame or a timing uh, of, of when and how they would like to, you know, consider a, a course like this, um, you know, we would like to help make that happen. And uh, uh, the main contact person is, is uh, Jenny Wendell on our alumni mini grants. Uh, so if you need to reach out to her um, at jenny.windell at goethe.de, um, she can provide you with our mini grant application. Um, it's also available on our, our soon to be relaunching website. Um, but uh, those mini grants are available for alumni to float all sorts of ideas and to get funding for all sorts of ideas, um, including a soft skills course. And so um, all they have to do is, is get that, um, you know, fill it out and submit it. And, uh, you know, we're happy to um, connect interested alumni with NOAA and to uh, get that conversation going with exploring a course and, and making it available. Um, so um, this is incredibly important and uh, it's something we want to help facilitate. And uh, it's one of those really cool benefits of, of the the terrible situation that we're in, in terms of the global pandemic, is the power of, of virtual exchange and uh, you know virtual workshops and, and virtual professional development, um, and allows us to open up uh, our classrooms um, uh, to the world and to experts around the world. Um, and so uh, we're excited for these possibilities, and we're excited to make this happen. And uh, we're also excited, as I discussed with with Noah, to. Uh, uh, incorporate, uh, you know, a few more Germans potentially in the future iterations who are, are subject matter experts on, on a various subjects. So um, bringing in that modern Germany component as well. So um, that's all I, I have. Um, other than that, we're, we're excited about this. Um, we're excited about the, the potential uh, possibilities in the future. And, uh, you know, we want to help, you know, our alumni make this happen and, uh, for their students. Um, so, um, uh, that's all I have to say. So I, I hope that provides a clear path forward for anyone who's, who hears this and sees this um, for how to, to request a, uh, a soft skills uh, course for their students. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks everyone. So thank you, Kirsten and Bill and Octai. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you for your input. Let me know if you have questions too. I'm always available. I know. Thank you, Octai. You're, you're amazing. Thanks, Octai. And uh, look at what you've done. Your email. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm very excited about that. It keeps on going, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs>
Wonderful. Um, awesome. Kirsten, do you have any other points or questions from your side? Um, just, I guess this is probably one I could get from reading the website, but um, like, what would be the timeline then on that? Could it be for implementing in the fall with the mini grant if we received it? Yeah, it's up for, it's up, the timeline is really up to the teachers and what's going to be best okay. for their students. Um, I would say the sooner you can get any kind of um, idea, you know, mini grant proposal in the pipeline, the better. Um, okay. But uh, that would be forwarded to, to Noah uh, so that she can get that on her radar too in terms of timing. Thank you. All right. Well, our, 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 our hour is up. And uh, Noah, it's time for you to go to bed, probably, over there. <laughs> it, is it is 11 PM here. So. Oh, definitely. <laughs> definitely. Yeah. It was great okay. to see you. Likewise. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. Really good. Bye. Goodbye, everyone. Bye. Until next time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Love you, Dizan. Auf Wiedersehen. Auf Wiedersehen. Ciao.